Along with immigration issues, infrastructure has been a main focus of Donald Trump since well before he took office. On the campaign trail, he pledged a $1 trillion infrastructure investment. And despite all the criticism he gets from Powell's in Massachusetts, at least part of that money apparently is going to Boston Harbor. Adam Riley has more. You could live in the Boston area for years and have no clue that Conley Terminal exists, which is pretty remarkable given the scale of the work that goes on inside and how incredibly noisy the place is. This is the MSC Judith. It's bringing cargo from the Mediterranean to the U.S. East Coast. Lisa Wheeland is the port director for Massport, which oversees Conley's operations. We bring in a lot of furniture, uh, a lot of uh, wine and beer, distilled spirits, seafood. We'll put containers on the ship that are carrying waste paper, scrap metal, and also seafood. We probably have about a thousand boxes uh, that are going on and coming off the ship today. By industry standards, though, Conley Terminal isn't what it could be. Right now, Boston Harbor's limited depth means ships like the Judith can only dock at certain times, and even bigger ships can't visit Boston at all. But that's about to change, thanks to an overhaul that was recently backed by the Trump administration. We just received federal funding uh, to move our Boston Harbor dredging project forward, which is really exciting. When we deepen the harbor, what it's going to do is enable larger ships to get here more efficiently and effectively. The harbor's depth will go from 40 feet now to 47 feet when work is completed, even deeper in the outer harbor. If the material dredged up were piled onto a football field, it would stretch a mile into the sky. But Scott Oconey, who's overseeing the project for the Army Corps of Engineers, says technically the task is fairly straightforward. You bring in a, a large floating platform, usually a barge or, or a ship, that's got a crane mounted to it. It's a crane with a clamshell bucket, so kind of like the old cranes that go down and, and grab. Scoop by scoop, they go down, they dig up the material. Which will then be shipped to a site 20 miles out in Massachusetts Bay, where it might provide an unexpected benefit. There are some drum fields and, and other industrial waste that was disposed of there. And so we're working with the EPA to see whether or not we should potentially use that material to cap that so that the environment's no longer exposed. Also slated for an expansion, Conley Terminal itself, which is getting a second berth and bigger cranes that can accommodate those bigger ships. Once the dredging project is completed, we will double our container volume here at Conley. That should mean more blue-collar jobs in a city that's increasingly white-collar. And Whelan says the benefits will extend even further. This terminal is really important for connecting New England to the global economy. At the end of the day, we are New England's only full-service container terminal. Uh, and so there is a lot of business here in New England and a lot of businesses that rely on this facility to import and export their goods. Adam Riley joins me. Add me to the group who never heard of Conley Terminal. You're with say. me there. Good. So what's the timetable for this mile of crap that they're going to, what's the timetable? they got to do some preliminary dredging to get it back down to its uh, official depth. They're going to start excavating in earnest next year, and it could take the better part of four years. It's a huge, huge job. But the reason they got to do this, the Panama Canal was recently expanded. So mm. was the Suez Canal. And all of a sudden, these huge ships are coming through. They become the industry standard. The ship we saw there was, I think, about 8,000 of those shipping units. Now you can get 13,000 on a boat. You know, another admission I have to make. One, you did a package a month or two ago talking about how Nixon retaliated against the one state that didn't vote for Massachusetts. That's right. With the dump closing, closing the, the Navy Charleston Yard. Yeah. And I said, look at Massachusetts. Republican governor didn't vote for him. All the Democratic uh, Congress mm -hmm. people are trashing him all the time. Yeah, There'll repeatedly. be retaliation. This sort of undercuts that notion. I it? was surprised that the Trump administration was on board with this. I tried to get Lisa Whelan, the port director, to admit that she'd been holding her breath. She was very diplomatically savvy. She would not acknowledge that it was a concern. But it took me by surprise, too. Uh, Trump, you know, has shown a tendency to be vindictive, but apparently he thinks this is a good idea and a, a vital port to bolster. Well, we shouldn't go too far because the good news is it's in Trump's budget. The bad news is Trump's budget has not been approved by right. Congress, so this money still may not materialize. That is correct. And as you might expect, that's something they don't even want to talk about. They say they're going to try to get the money one way or another, but it's a $350 million project. So Trump would help finish it off if that money comes through, but they might be able to find other sources. Adam, thanks so much. Thanks really for appreciate the story.